Mike. Yeah, it's working now. It's working, it's working now. now. Yeah. Mr. President, I remain Muhammad Adam Alero, representing the good people of KB Center. Uh, I come under Order 41 and 50 and 51. And with your permission, Mr. President, I will read. of the day sitting and the president of the senate shall refuse to allow the claim unless he is satisfied that the matter is definite and urgent and mr president i also go to order 51 notice shall not be dispensed with in the case of a motion or in respect of any other proceeding for which notice is required except with the consent of the President of the Senate and the General Assent of the Senator's President. So, this, this is which the, your mic is not working. And it would be nice for you to be recorded. The clerk. The technical team, please recheck the mics. Microphones are not working. Just the synopsis of the matter, Mr. President, uh, is about the death of former governor of Yobe State, and also senator that represented Yobe East for 12 good years in this chamber. And I believe we should give him the normal courtesy we give to eminent personalities that serve this nation diligently and conscientiously. So I prepared a eulogy, a eulogy speech, and with your permission, Mr. President, I will go ahead and read it. Uh, distinguished colleagues, the elder statesman and our very distinguished brother, distinguished Senator Adama Aleru, approached me on this matter that though the issue of uh, the death of our uh, elder statesman, Buka Abba, was uh, brought forward to the chambers yesterday under a, a personal explanation that particularly his colleagues who were governors in 1992, some of them governors in 1990, uh, 1999, and then of course his colleagues who were also sitting next to him for 12 good years in this hollow chamber would like to eulogize him and let Nigeria know the kind of personality that this nation has lost. And so he's craving the indulgence of the Senate uh, to use his order 1B and bend his rules and allow him to present this eulogy. Is, is it the view of the Senate that he be allowed to do so? Yes. Those who support say aye. aye. Those again say nay. The eyes, uh, the eyes have it. You may proceed. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, distinguished colleagues. Uh, this motion is sponsored by myself and co sponsored by Ali Magataka Wamoko and Senator Mohammed Nanjim Goji. And I forgot to put the name of uh, Senator Uje Uzu Kanyu. So the Senate notes that late Senator Bukhara Abba Ibrahim, who passed away in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, on the 4th of February 2024, 
was a figure of profound public service and dedication. He embarked on his illustrious career with a strong educational foundation, having earned a Bachelor of Science degree in quantity survey from Amadou Bello University, Zaria, and postgraduate professional training in the United Kingdom. His tenure as Commissioner of Works in the old Bornu State, which now comprise Bornu and Yobi State, showcased his diligence and commitment to public service, setting a precedent for future roles in governance. The Senate is aware that as an astute politician, Senator Bukhar Abu Ibrahim was elected three times as governor of Yobi State, making him as the first civilian governor since the state's creation on 27th August 1991 under the platform of Social Democratic Party. He was also among the first cohort of elected governors following the restoration of democracy in Nigeria in 1999. He served alongside with distinguished colleagues, including the current president of Nigeria, President Bola Ahmed Tinbu, GCFR, as governor of Lagos State. His governance spanned cumulative decades across the third and fourth republics. He exhibited unwavering commitment to Yobia State and its people. Senator Bukhar Abba Ibrahim's leadership as the governor of Yobia State from 1999 to 2007 was illustratively trans transformative. His administration was marked by significant in infrastructural development, which included the construction of roads, provision of water supply, and the improvement in the healthcare delivery. He also prioritized rural electrification and agriculture, notably through his pet project, Back to Farm program, and also established the Yobe State University, which demonstrated his achievement to education and sustainable development to the people of Yobe State. The Senate is aware that in the 12 years he served as legislator in the Senate, Bukhar Abba Ibrahim distinguished himself through his honesty, frankness to a fault, as he says it, and it is without any fear or contradiction, he bearded his mind against all odds and was devoted to the welfare of the common man, the telecowers. His legislative contributions were pivotal. He advocated for policies that fostered national unity and development. He chaired the Committee on Ecology and Climate Change, where his work was instrumental in addressing environmental challenges. His advocacy and legislation reflected a deep commitment to the welfare of Nigerians, earning him widespread respect and admiration. The, the Senate further notes that Bukhar Abba Ibrahim was a paragon of democratic excellence, whose career was built on the principles of inclusivity, bridge building among diverse communities. He received many titles across ethnic and tribal boundaries. His loyalty and patriotism to his political party were evident when he aspired for the presidency in 2007, a dream he selflessly set aside in favor of supporting uh, late, uh, Pre President Muhammad Buhari. He, he demonstrated his dedication to national causes over personal ambition. He was very consistent and never changed his political party. He was also a front runner in the formation of All Progressive Congress, APC. His legacy as devoted public servant, Democrat, patriot, who stylishly worked for the betterment of his state and the country remains inspirational. Accordingly, the Senate resolved to recommend the immortalization of Senator Bukhar Abba Ibrahim's name by renaming an educational institution with in recognition of his pivotal role and his profound contribution to the advancement of education in Yobe State 
and Nigeria at large. This act will serve as a lasting tribute to his vision for educational excellence and commitment to the, to the development of Yobi State. Two, observe one minute silence in honor of the departed soul of late Bukhar Abba Ibrahim, acknowledging his vast contribution to the state and the nation. And lastly, to send a delegation to convey the Senate's condolences to the people of Yobi State and the family of the late Senator, recognizing their loss and the nation's shared grief. I so move, Mr. President. Thank you. This is Senator Ojo Zakalo. Yes, Mr. President, my name is Oji Ozakalo. I represent Abia North. I stand to second the motion ably raised by Senator Adamu Alero. And Mr. President, in seconding the motion, I would like to ask for a few minutes for comment on Abba Bukhar Ibrahim. He was elected governor the same day and sworn in the same day by myself and the Governor Lero and the sitting president today. I want to say that he was a very peaceful man. I saw him last some few months ago and um, I was telling I said there was a name I called. I said, listen, I'm not sure you are feeling very well. He said, no, he has some challenges. But as a colleague, he did his job to people of Yobo State very well. And uh, he defended democracy when the time was there for us to defend democracy. Yes. He was a very bright governor. He served the people of Yobo State very well. I don't need to take time because mo most other people might like to speak. And I adore him for his steadfastness on when we had challenges between us and the federal government. He stood on the part of the people. And I want to say I align myself with all the uh, requests Senator Adamu Alero have made this morning. And I say may you so rest in peace. And I want my colleagues to speak out on this honorable man. Thank you very much. This is, uh... Senator Wamaku. Thank you, Mr. President, my respected colleagues. I'm also rising to add my voice or support this motion moved by Senator Adamaleru, as funded by Senator Ozokalu. But let the fighter colleague, let Senator Bukarab Ibrahim, who are going to be able to Mr. President, I was with late governor, as deputy governor when he was a governor. We served in the Senate for two good terms. And I know he had a very close rent. And I was tuned to visit Yobe different times when he was governor of Yobe State. And he's somebody whom you can comfortably call a true Nigerian. A man or peace, a governor of the masses, a man who came so and conquered. Mr. President, you can go ahead and say more and more about this gentleman, departed soul, because it's what he deserved. Today, we do it to pay it all much Allah to grant him that to produce as he departed this earthly world. I so support Mr. President. Thank you. Senator Nini, you take your seat. Distinguished Senator Mongunu. <laughs> distinguished Senators, Mr. President, Distinguished Senators, my name is Mohamed Tahir Mongunu. I represent Bornu North Senatorial District. Though there is maybe what I would call generation difference between my humble self and the late Bukhara by Ibrahim, Senator Bukhara by Ibrahim, but having come from a sister state, 
of Bornu. As a young man, I have closely watched his political trajectory in public life, his commitment and dedication to serve the people is exemplary and real. In the sense that when he was the governor of Yobe State, he was nicknamed governor of the masses because of the friendly and people-oriented programs that he has been executed in Yobe State. And as a senator, he championed the cause of the underprivileged and the masses in all the legislations that he sponsored and supported. He's a leader par excellence. And the only consolation that we have is that while on earth, he served humanity very well. Death is a necessary end. It will come when it will come. And every living soul must test death. Kulun Napsi Zaliketel Maut. So on this note, I want to seize this opportunity to wish him a Janna Hirdos. Thank you. Thank you. Distinguished Deputy Senate President. Thank you, Mr. President. Barao Ayajibrin Kanunov. Mr. President, let me begin by condoling and commiserating with the people, or first of all, the immediate family of Central Buka Abba Ibrahim, the people of Borno State, the Senate of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, and indeed the entire country, for the loss of one of our leaders, foremost leaders in Nigeria. It is sad, but I take solace in a phrase in the Holy Quran, which says in Arabic, We belong to God, and to him we shall return. He has gone. That is something that is mandated, is compulsory on all human beings. Senator Abba, Bukha Abba Ibrahim was a senator here. He was our colleague. He was my colleague. We were together with him here. But even before then, he was someone that was well known by all those who were in the progressive fold in this country. Indeed, entire Nigerians, because of uh, his political disposition. He was a progressive to the core. Someone that was in the fold of the lives of Mala Amin Khan. He was not someone that was uh, having the inclination of trying to uh, acquire wealth, primitive acquisition of wealth. He was not in that class. He served distinction and never cared to acquire wealth for his own benefit. He was someone that was very close to the masses. Whatever I had was for the masses. You never, nobody saw him riding in a very exotic car or in a big mansion or wearing expensive clothes. No, 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 no. Whatever I had was for the masses. And we saw that disposition here when he was in the, uh, in the Senate. Someone who was very frank. Whenever there was any motion or bill that had to do with the masses, he was in the forefront. I never cared or was never afraid to talk to, the, to, 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 to power. He always tried to make his uh, feelings or opinions known about what should be done to the masses. So I was very glad yesterday when Senator Ademo Alero 
Senator Wamako and Nejuma Goji, and of course you, the Senate President, and myself, said, look, this patriot of our time should not just be discussed in one or two minutes on the floor of the Senate, that we should really eulogize him so that the younger generation, those who don't know him, should know what he has done for this country, so that they can emulate him. This is what is good. When you have patches of this kind of class, when they are no longer alive, tell the younger generation what they've done so that they can learn from what he has done for this country. He showed his uh, progressive inclination to position by joining the SDP. He wanted to be the governor of Yobe State under the banner of the SDP. Not the NRC. The NRC was for the bourgeois, for the elites of that time. Where we were in the SDP. They belong the same class with him. I'm also a progressive like him. <laughs> I'm a progressive like him from the Amidu kind of class of politics. And of course, Abu Karimi was my leader. So he was a man of the people, a founding father one of the founding fathers of current, of the present Yobe state. One of those that established who were the forefront of the establishment of Yobe state. And he became the first governor of that state. He created the entire foundation of the state. Just like we always say, our president, the Senate president, is the architect of the modern uh, archive of state. Booker Abba Brian was the architect of what we now have as Yobi State, one of the states of this country. He has done well, and I thank everyone, particularly the main mover of the motion. And of course, Senator Lenji Mogoje, he stood, he said, no, 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 it's not, it's not possible. We must bring this as a substantive motion to discuss and also said to Wamako, I indeed, in fact, the Senate President, even the day was a day, he rose, he raised, he said, no, he said, no, 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 we must discuss it. We must debate this motion. Thank you for what you have done, even though he was one of you as a former governor, but I think his um, disposition, his disposition demands that he should be debated, or because his disposition was something that had inclination to the cause of the masses. He has done well for this country, and I pray that may he rest in the agenda of a Delsi. Thank you, Mr. President. This is Senator Nige. Thank you, Mr. President. My name is Abdul Ningi, and I represent Bauchi Central. Mr. President, let me begin with this famous Quranic verses. Quranic verse, which says, Kulli nafsin zai katil maut. Translated to mean, God says, every soul, every soul shall taste death. It is, of course, sir, with a heavy heart that this morning we are discussing the late Buka Abba Ibrahim. And I thought, Senator Aliro, in particular, has sufficiently addressed some of the very highlights of the man's life. But there is a missing link that I have not had anybody mention, and that is the fact that Bukhar Abba was a sportsman of the highest degree. Bukhar Abba, uh, Mr. President, was the former chairman of the Nigerian Hockey Federation from 1913 to 1918. 2013 to 2018. And when he left for the chairmanship, when he left the chairmanship of the Nigerian Hockey Federation, my humble self took over from him as the chairman of the Nigerian Hockey Federation. But that is not the story. The story is that Bukhar Abba created a team called Desert Rollers of Yobe. 
which became the national champions for four consecutive years in the Nigerian hockey history, and also became African champions for two consecutive times, and also became JF Kennedy champions in the United States for four consecutive times. So the distinguished uh, Senator Nengi, of all the eulogies we have heard so far, this aspect of his uh, sports, life. sports contribution yes, sir. to our national life yes, sir. was not highlighted. Just, I just uh, want to crave your indulgence to repeat that aspect for the knowledge of Nigerians. For the knowledge of Nigerians, of course. This is not something that is out there except for those who are into sports. And I said, Bukaraba was the former national chairman of the Nigerian Hockey Federation for a span of seven years. When he left as the chairman of the Nigerian Hockey Federation, and while I was in the Senate, as the deputy minority leader, he went, came to, into my office and urged me to contest for the position. And he helped me to win the position as the national chairman of the Nigerian Hockey Federation. And I said that is not the story. The story is that Abba, because of his love for sports, and hockey in particular, formed a team called Yobe Desert Rollers. And this team, from nowhere, out of the blues, destroyed the former champions from Delta, from Casina, from Lagos. And they became synonymous with hockey development in Nigeria. Mr. President, at a time when Abba was the governor, the, his Desert Rollers team supplied the Nigerian hockey national team with almost nine nationals. Nine people who were playing for the country. And they became champions for four consecutive times in Nigeria. They became African champions two times and became club champions in United States of America for four consecutive times. And the championship was called JF Kennedy Championship. And I'm sure this is something that a lot of Nigerians don't know. And he died every time there was issue in hockey. He made sure that he is there. He had the opportunity of taking our national team to various sporting competition, even when the federal government was not giving them money. And that is about for you. So I think this is something that has really touched the sports-loving people of this country and our hockey family in, in particular. We'll be mourning the loss of this gentleman for the last 40, uh, 72 hours. And it is really very difficult to find somebody like him. And I thought, uh, it, is, it is gratifying when Alero, Senator Alero came and moved this motion, and you had a lot of our colleagues uh, uh, el el giving him the elegies that he deserved. I think we should not forget this guy, this man, and I'm sure hockey family, uh, we're putting our heads together to see which stadium we'll name after uh, Abba Bukar. May uh, the soul of uh, Bukar Abares in perfect peace. Thank you, Mr. President, for giving me this unique opportunity. I really appreciate it. You can see he did, uh, his contributions were such that he actually, even in debt, merits what the Senate is doing today. Uh, you are just seeing the life of excellence, contributions to national life. This is Senator Goje. Thank you, Mr. President. I am Mohammed Nanjumo Goje representing Gome Central. Mr. President, I will start by at the peril of repeating what others have said to thank you very much for giving the Senate the opportunity to formally elegize this uh, very, very important well-known, democratic, simple politician, Alaji Senator 
distinguish Bukar Abba uh, Ibrahim. Because just to go and discuss it in one minute and then you do one minute silence and sit down for somebody who has been here for 12 years in the Senate. Not only that, for being maybe the only or very few of them who survived, who were governors under the military 1991 under Babangida and survived, came back to play another role and got elected as a governor in 1999. I think there are very few of them who were governors at that time and also came back to play politics and got elected as governors. That shows that uh, he did what the people wanted him to do. He was very popular. Indeed, he was very popular. In Yobe State today, at the, without fear of contradiction, I can say the majority of the politicians in Yobe today are people who have gone under his tutelage beginning from the former Senate President Dow, Governor, everybody there. Um, so he deserves what we are doing to him today. He deserves it very much. Uh, I know Senator Bukhar Abba Ibrahim about 50 years ago. I knew him in 1974, when he was his last year in the university, and I went to the School of Basic Studies in Abu Zaria. He was, even at that time, he was very active in the Students' Union, uh, no, particularly the Northeast, at that time it was Northeast, all the six states of Northeast are under one government, Northeast State Students' Union, he was very active, he showed leadership, and since then, I have been together with him, I know him, we were attracting as friends, as senior brother, and younger brother, and then later on as politicians, particularly as politicians, who were neighbors of the governor of Gombe State, first timer. He was the governor of uh, Yobe State, second timer. And the four years I was a governor, we interacted very, very closely with him. I remember many times he invited me to Yobe to go and commission some of his projects, particularly the rural education projects. He did a lot of rural education projects. And he invited me as a governor of Gombe State to go and commission some of his projects, especially those in the southern territorial district of uh, Yobe State. And he also came to Gombe on many occasions to commission our projects and also to attend so many of the social activities that we had in Gombe. In fact, I can say Bukhar Abba contributed maybe 50% to my coming to the Senate. When I was finishing the second term, I'd, uh, I, he was already in the Senate as a first-timer. And we met somewhere in one of the meetings, and I said, he asked me, hey, Kanina, he called me Kanina because Kanina means my younger brother. I said, Kanina, when you finish this governor, what are you going to do? I said, ah, I think I'll go back to, I was a businessman, I'll go back to business, or I'll go to farming. He said, no, 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 come to the Senate. If you are governor, you spend eight years, you only, want, you only know one aspect of politics and also governance and administration. If you don't come to Senate as a parliamentarian, you will not get necessary experience as a, full, uh, as a full scale politician. Uh, I, he really convinced me, and I think uh, from that time I made up my mind to come to the Senate. I'm glad to say I came to the Senate. We spent two terms with him the servants and the Senate, and as uh, Ningi said, he was not only a politician uh, per se on the parliamentary side, he was also very active in the area of Hochi. He was very keen, very, very keen. He tried to, com to convert me, but unfortunately I'm not, uh, I'm not uh, a sportsman. I, I couldn't do it, but uh, I gave him support, and I encouraged him to do it. So Bukhar Abba, as a politician, was grassroots man, a very transparent and non-corrupt politician. Very simple. He had, he, I'm sure he died without leaving anything substantial because he believes in whatever he had is for the people. Mm -hmm. He was very, very generous. Whatever he get, whatever he got, he gave. Whatever he got, he gave. Whatever he got, he gave. And that's why he was able to survive 10 years as a governor. 12 years as a senator, and if he had wanted to come back as a fourth timer, 
he would have been, he would have come back. And if he had wanted to come back as a fifth timer in this Senate, he would have come back. Because he had got the necessary respect and acceptability by his people. But I think uh, as, a, as an elder, he decided to, to, to step down, probably attend to his health and other family matters. Mr. President, on this call, I want to once more use this opportunity to condone our selves here as senators, who are his colleagues, our colleagues and former governors, his people in Yobe, the government and people of Yobe, the federal government, his family, and all those concerned with his uh, affairs. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give him adana for those. Thank you very much. Allah jikansa. Thank you. Thank you, this is Senator Goje. And for some of our colleagues who were not here, when Senator Alero raised this uh, motion, uh, I pointed out that even though we heard about this through personal explanation yesterday, that uh, the Senate uh, utilizes his uh, rule under Section 1B, uh, that in all cases not provided for in the standing order or by sessional or other orders or practices of the Senate, the Senate shall, by resolution, regulate its proceedings. And so the Senate, by resolution, decided that it was uh, still necessary for us to utilize this man who spent 12 year, good years here and spent 10 years as a, a governor in one of the states in Nigeria, a foundation politician. And from what you are hearing, an icon of sports, a, a man who committed himself to the service of humanity. So for the past 72 years, uh, 72 hours, all of us in this hallowed chamber are mourning, and we are still mourning the passing away of uh, Governor Senator Bokar Abba. And so we decided to give ourselves the opportunity to say one or two things about him that many Nigerians did not know. So let me invite one of his uh, classmates, distinguished uh, Senator Yahya, to say what. Thank you, Mr. President. I am very grateful to you for giving me this opportunity. And I want to use it to pay tribute and extend my condolences to all of us, to you in particular, and to all of us, and to members of his family. I knew Senator Bukhar Abu Ibrahim, I think, a bit earlier than Goje, because he was my classmate. I knew him even much earlier through our mutual friends, late Bala Usman, late Kari Tijani, and several others of blessed memory. We are very, very close, all of our students, in Ahmad Bello University. Although I graduated a bit earlier, in 1974, he graduated in 75, but he was an exceptional engineering student, and I, somebody who had a very, very solid background in the sciences. We always uh, communicate and congregate through our mutual friend, Lawal Patagrawa, and several others. We used to take visits from Zaria to Kaduna to go to Borno to meet him. He was a commissioner in Borno State Government at that time during the military. Bukhar Abba did not come out in politics to be a governor. He was identified to be director campaign organization for Iram Ali. And somehow, in the middle of those political times, the turbulence in the military politics, states were created. And then when Yobi was created out of Borno, he found himself, you know, the only person standing. So we told him, ah, why don't you go for it? You know, he went for it, and a lot of us were quite surprised that he even got elected because, you know, Bukhar had uh, virtually nothing. You know, and uh, for politics of those days and even now, people without resources, you know, hardly make it to the top. But that shows you the character of the person. Bukhar, like Sr. Uh, Tagoje said, is a very, very, extremely very simple person. You find him with almost at home with ordinary people. 
You go into a crowd, he's a very silent person. Unless you look very closely, you not even know that he is around, even while he was a governor. He's a very, very prudent and a very disciplined person, highly disciplined. In fact, when some people reproach him, you know, for not being rich, Booker always said that, how much do you need to live? His thing is about basic survival. And like Rajiv like Mogoji said, what he has goes out. What he gets goes out. Sometimes, even while he was a governor, he used to uh, visit Kari Tijani, and they lodge in the uh, Yobe Lodge at that time in uh, uh, near my house in uh, area 11. So I always walked down to go and see them. There was a time when he was governor and he had no cobble inside his pocket. He had to borrow money from me, who was a civil servant. And you know that's what you have in Bukhara Abba. It is a memory for me, having lost one of the best friends that I had in my life. I can remember, you know, when during 1993 election when the, 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 the SDP, I resigned my position and joined politics and vied for the position. You were the one who actually instigated that I should buy for the position of the secretary of the Social Democratic Party, which, uh, which uh, uh, the DSP was talking about. I contested against Lamido and uh, this Daura, Kabir Daura and others. And it was quite uh, turbulent at that time. It was Bukhar Abba who held the course. And during the time when there was this real fight, you know, in the SDP on Abiola presidency, I remember I was the secretary of the committee that was set up to reconcile all the irreconcilable uh, people after the Just Convention. We were defeated because we were in the King Gibe faction. So we came and congregated in Abuja, and uh, Bukhari was one of the members of the committee. And we were there, and the issue came up. Where do we go after the defeat that we suffered in the hands of Abiola? Bukhari and some of us insisted that, look, we should not allow ourselves to be marginalized. The military actually at that time did not want to leave. So they wanted to put a wedge in the political parliament. Booker was one of the people who suggested that we join Abiola and get him to accept King Gibe as his vice presidential candidate. And that's how June 12th came. Without those decisions, which Booker and others, which uh, which uh, Booker and others made out, there will never have been June 12th, which is the foundation on which this government is standing on. So, Mr. President, why I eulogize and uh, commiserate with you, my friends and the family of late Booker Abba, I will pray to Allah, like all of us, we are all on our way there. I pray to Allah to bless his soul and give comfort to the people he left behind. Thank you and God bless you. Uh, this is Senator Victor. Man. Thank you, Mr. President. My name is uh, Senator Victor Ume. I represent Anambra Central Senatorial District. Thank you, Mr. President, for giving me an opportunity to contribute to this tribute session for this great Nigerian, late Senator Buka Abba Ibrahim. Mr. President, it's not all the time that every good thing a man did in his lifetime will be remembered. But today, I'm very happy to stand up to pay tribute to this great Nigerian. We were in the same eighth Senate with Buka Ibrahim, Senator. And there was one thing that he did that endeared him to me. There was a day the Senate considered the report for the composition 
of the board members of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission. Mr. President, in that report, the Southeast had no representative in the proposed board. That report was considered by the Senate. I remember I raised an objection to the confirmation of those nominations. That incident threw the Senate into a rowdy session, and eventually we went into a closed door session. When we got there, Senator Buka Ibrahim was the first person to stand up to condemn the list. He condemned the exclusion of the Southeast from the Board of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission. And he also supported that that list should be rejected and sent back to the president so that the Southeast will have a representative in the commission. I was so surprised because I didn't know he was the one that would stand up to give support to the rejection of that list. So he came across to me as a man who stood for equity and fairness. He was a nationalist to the core. And he was someone who believed that every part of Nigeria must be carried along in the affairs of government. It was a rare thing to behold. So from that day, I marked him out as somebody who stood for fairness and equity. In that same day, he complained about the exclusion of Yobe State from the board of the ICPC. At the end of that session, we returned to plenary, and the Senate rejected that list and returned it to Mr. President for correction so that the Southeast will have a member in the board. The same thing with the ICPC board that was returned so that Yobe State will have a, a nominee. So he was somebody who stood for everybody. He didn't want anybody to be uh, excluded in the affairs of government. Greatly so, in 2021, the president reconstituted that board and reflected the resolution passed by the Senate. Put somebody from the Southeast in that board and then put somebody from Yobe State in the board of ICPC. He would have kept quiet in the normal scheme of things then, but he said that was unfair. He stood his ground. So today that we are talking about him, I, felt, I feel so complete that I'm given a chance to talk about this man. A very quiet person, like Senator Yahya Abdullah, he said. He, he will never make himself noticed in any gathering. Very intelligent, a quantity surveyor at that. He will study every situation and make well-informed contribution to the debates. Anytime he's given chance, he was given chance to speak. So now that he has passed on, I want to say that Nigeria has lost somebody who has great respect to national unity. Because when you carry everybody along in the affairs of government, there will be unity. So I want to say that um, he was a good example of somebody who wished Nigeria to be truly united. So that nobody will be left behind. Those of us who are still in the saddle, we should emulate the life of Senator Boko Abba Ibrahim. So that at any time, we'll be thinking about how everybody will be accommodated and how everybody will be happy. I'm happy that you also mentioned my name yesterday among those who will be going to Yobe tomorrow or any day we elect. I'm happy to be a member of that team to go there and pay my last respect to this man in his home state. Thank you very much. May God bless his soul. I, I, I believe strongly that the, 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 uh, the speech of the uh, Senate Senator Victor May has more or less uh, added any missing gap that we had in the discussion and the eulogy of this great man, distinguished Senator Booker Abba.
of blessed memory. But uh, I noticed that the former speaker and uh, former governor, even though much, much younger, may have had uh, one or two things to do with later uh, Abba uh, Buka Ibrahim. So, distinguished Senator Tambowa, uh, you are you're the last to speak, and then we go to the next item because of time. Thank you very much, Mr. President. My respected colleagues, I remain Amin Waziri Tambual, representing Sokoto South Senatorial District. Mr. President, I indicated my interest to make some remarks on this legendary politician, Bukhar Abba Ibrahim, of blessed memory, whom I first encountered when he was a state governor of Yobe State, when in our party then, the ANPP, we had some issues. I was nominated and met to replace the minority leader of the House of Representatives in July of 2005, against the wish of so many power brokers in the ANPP, of course, including Senator Adamu Alero, <laughs> and a number of ANPP governors were opposed to my emergence. I reminded your elder brother yesterday, Donald Etebet, his role of trying to stop me from being so recognized by the leadership of the House. Then he was chairman of the ANPP. But when I and my colleagues who are empaneled to be the new leadership of the ANPP caucus in the House of Representatives traveled to Yobe, Damatru, we met this humble, gentle, amiable, and people-loving governor of your state, Bukaraba Ibrahim. He received us warmly, and we told him our story of how we emerged as leaders of the caucus. He immediately embraced us and put words across to some of his colleagues' governors to accept us and allow us to perform our functions as new leaders of the minority caucus of the House of Representatives. That was my first close contact with Bukhar Abba Ibrahim. But before he passed on, and before his health failed, he came to Sokoto on a visit. Then I was sitting governor of Sokoto State. And he brought some copies of the book he authored, Politics, in the title of the book. And it was the story of Bukhar Abba Ibrahim, how he grew up from a humble background and got to where he got to. Very impactful life. He, he men and indeed a leader that was loved by his people. Virtually every politician that you see of today from your state had gone through the Bukhara Abba Ibrahim School of Politics. Virtually all of the technocrats of today have gone through Bukhara Abba Ibrahim. He lived a life of legacy. He lived a very simple life dedicated to humanity and service to his people, the telecows of Yobi State. May his soul rest in perfect peace. May Allah have mercy on him. Thank you very much, President of the Senate. Thank you, the very distinguished Senator Alero, uh, distinguished Senator Wamako, distinguished Senator Danjuma Goje, distinguished Senator Oju Sakalo, and all our colleagues who, who contributed to bring in this eulogy uh, before the Nigerian Senate today. And I want to thank all those who have made contributions. You see, death is something that is appointed unto man. Every one of us will die one day. But what we'll be remembered for will be the lives that we touched and what we left behind. So I, I feel very highly emotional about the contributions of this great man, uh, the senior Senator uh, Buka Abba Ibrahim. Uh, there are many missing gaps here today. Uh, even his life as a great sportsman, his contributions to sports, 
the formation of the hockey team that won many laurels, both nationally and internationally for Nigeria, his simplicity, even in life and in governance, and uh, even this last speech from uh, my brother, Governor, uh, Senator Governor Tambua, showing that in his early years as minority leader, that he was always used to challenging the establishment and emerging. Uh, the same thing he did when he was, uh, uh, when he became a speaker, he, he, he challenged us, and uh, he wore Niger Delta cap and entered through the fence and, uh, and became the speaker. <laughs> so, so it shows that this is something that is in his DNA. <laughs> so, so, but I thank God that uh, my late brother, uh, Buka Abba Ibrahim, accepted you. And, uh, and I'm sure that was the end of all disagreements. Because if he was so highly respected, even in MPP then, that when he accepted you, that was the end of all disagreements. So it is good that you brought this up. And now I know you better. <laughs> So I, I want to thank all of us for all we have said about this great man. And I assure you that the Senate has a proper record of the contributions of this great soul. 12 years in this hallowed chambers as a senator, 10 years as a governor, unprecedented, and a man who lived for the people. Uh, he did not uh, die leaving mansions behind. He did not die leaving uh, uh, Rolls Royce and uh, exotic cars behind. He died a simple man, he lived a simple life, and lived for humanity. And if you take notes, you will notice where he died. He actually died in the Holy Land of Saudi Arabia. And uh, this, for me, it gives me goose pimples that, yes, indeed, that God accepted his life so well that God even chose where he should die where the Holy Prophet was born. May his soul rest in peace. So we'll just go straight into the prayers. We had obse observed a mini silence yesterday in his honor, but I think it's not too much if we do so again today. That is by way of prayer one, uh, because for him to have served 10 years as governor, 12 years as a senator, I think he deserves all the eulogy we can and all the respect we can give to him, even in death. So if it is a wish of the Senate that prayer one uh, be upheld, uh, those in support say aye. aye. Those again say nay. The eyes have it. Uh, prayer two. Uh, pr uh, pr prayer three, actually. We have a, already a strong delegation led by distinguished Senator Alero to visit the family and, the, and condole with the good people of uh, Yobe State through the government of Yobe State. Uh, though this is already uh, been agreed upon by the Senate, but for reaffirmation, those in support say aye. aye. Those again say nay. The eyes have it. May we rise once again to pay respects. Yes. Uh, prayer one is about the immortalization of Senator Bukarama uh, by renaming an educational institution in his honor. I don't know whether we should, uh, this should be done by the government of uh, Yobe State or whether it should be done by the federal government. But either is okay. Those in support of prayer one say aye. aye. Those again say nay. The eyes have it. So let's observe one more time. I mean, silence. By the soul of led distinguished Senator Abba Buka Ibrahim, rest in peace. Amen.
Yes, that, uh, unless it's something very short, uh, this is Senator Son Masha. Otherwise, uh, we, we have uh, service chiefs that we are taking by 12.30. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, can I uh, just quickly say something? Let me know. Two, two minutes, Mr. President. Sunday, Marshal Khatoum. I represent the people of Kaduna South Territorial District. I come under order 42, matter of personal explanation. Uh, it's an announcement of the election of Mrs. Abigail Marshall Katum as Lord Mayor elect of this Leeds City Council. With the kind permission of the President of the Senate and the indulgence of my colleagues, Senators, I wish to formally notify you of the election of my wife as the Lord Mayor elect of the City of Leeds in the United Kingdom, which took place on the 17th of January 2024. The implication of our election is that I will consequently become the Lord Mayor Consort, which is a co ceremonial role. It is. <laughs> Mr. President, sir, I need your protection. <laughs> I need your protection, Mr. President. <laughs> It is worthy of it is worthy of note, Mr. President, that she is not just the first Nigerian to be elected into that position, but the first African in over 129 years of the city's existence. The mayoral inauguration is scheduled to hold at the Civic Hall of the Leeds City Council on the 23rd May 2024 at 4:30 p.m. All senators are hereby cordially invited to witness the ceremony. Thank you very much, Mr. President. I saw. Of of your back, uh, distinguished uh, colleagues, uh, distinguished Senator Adar Modu, uh, you are the Senate spokesman. Please, immediately after this, you have to let the world know that we now have a Lord Mayor Consort. <laughs> in the Senate. So, this is which, uh, uh, noted, okay. So, this is which Senator Sunday Masha Khartoum, even without speaking, because you came under personal explanation. I think the Senate has noted with gratitude and, and what God has done for Nigeria and for your family, that today we have a Lord Mayor of uh, Leeds and the first Nigerian uh, to be so elected in 129 years, or uh, the first African to hold that position, and even to further note that we have a Lord Mayor Consort sitting amongst us, and uh, I, I don't know because uh, maybe the Senate may, may the Senate may decide to agree that you come with your official ceremonial dress wherever you come for sittings. But we want to congratulate you and congratulate your dear wife, and the personal explanation is upheld. <laughs> Senator Leader. Mr. President, very distinguished senators of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, the first business of the day is the presentation of a bill standing in the name of distinguished senator. Siako Yaro Anthony on the Federal College of Agriculture and Animal Husbandry Establishment Bill 2024 SB 297. Mr. President, you may wish to invite the Clerk of the Senate to read the short title of the bill. Clerk of the Senate. Mr. President, the Senate Senators. Federal College of Agriculture and Animal Husbandry Establishment Bill 2024, SB 297, first reading. Distinguished colleagues, Federal College of Agriculture and Animal Husbandry Establishment Bill 2024, SB 297, first reading taken. Leader of the Senate. Mr. President, the second business of the day is the presentation of a bill standing in the name of distinguished Senator Nwoye Tony 
on the Federal Medical Centers Act Amendment Bill 2024, SB 327. Mr. President, you may wish to invite the Clerk of the Senate to read the short title of the bill. Clerk of the Senate. Mr. President, distinguished Senators, Federal Medical Centers Act Amendment Bill 2024, SB 327, first reading. Distinguished colleagues, Federal Medical Center Act Amendment Bill 2024, SB 327, first reading taken. Leader of the Senate. Mr. President, very distinguished Senators, the third business of the day is the presentation of a bill standing in the name of distinguished Senator Abiru Mukail Adetokumbo on the Inflation Reduction Program Special Provisions Bill 2024, SB 336. Mr. President, you may wish to invite the Clerk of the Senate to read the short title of the bill. Clerk of the Senate. Mr. President, the single senators, Inflation Reduction Program Special Provisions Bill 2024, SB 336, first reading. Distinguished colleagues, Inflation Reduction Program Special Provisions Bill 2024, SB 336, first reading taken. Leader of the Senate. Mr. President, our title of the bill. Clerk of the Senate. Mr. President, the single senators, Child Rights Act Amendment Bill 2024, SB 337, first reading. Distinguished colleagues, Child Rights Act Amendment Bill 2024, SB 337, first reading. Thank you. The Senate Leader. Mr. President, distinguished colleagues, the fifth business of the day is the presentation of a bill standing in the name of distinguished Senator Etim Basi Aniekan on the Agricultural Research Council Act Amendment Bill 2024, SB 338. Mr. President, you may wish to invite the Clerk of the Senate to read the short title of the bill. Clerk of the Senate. Mr. President, the single senators, Agricultural Research Council Act Amendment Bill 2024, SB 338, first reading. Distinguished colleagues, Agricultural Research Council Act Amendment Bill 2024, SB 338, first reading taken. Without the Senate. Thank you, Mr. President and distinguished colleagues. The only order of the day is the security briefing by the service chiefs to brief this distinguished Senate as represented, elected representatives of the Nigerian people on the general security situation in the country. Mr. President, distinguished colleagues, you will recall that the Senate resolved to invite the service chiefs for an interactive session with a view to resolving the insecurity situation plaguing the country. Mr. President, distinguished senators, in order to carry out this exercise in conformity with our standing order 17 on floor privileges, I will move two motions. One, I move that the, first, that the Senate do resolve into the committee of the all in closed session, and I will wait for the minority leader to 
second day before I go to the second motion. I thank you. In closed session, are we in closed session? Well, I, I thought uh, uh, I thought we should resolve into committee of the whole first, and thereafter we we'll, we we can discuss closed session after we have received. In fact, you, the, the, uh, the, the other motion should actually be that the, we should open the chambers for strangers to, to come in. Well, uh, Mr. President, that was meant to be my second motion in accordance with the chamber brief. But I, as well, my allow the second motion to come first. So um, we go first into committee of the whole. Well, my first motion in this uh, regard if uh, I'm allowed to move, would be in respect of uh, suspending our rules to admit um, the service exactly. chips. So I'm saying let's take it in order of that. Yes. So let's first uh, get the motion to suspend our rules in case we want strangers to come into chambers. Well, um, as ably led, Mr. President, distinguished colleagues, my first motion then will be to move that the Senate do admit the service chiefs and the special advisor to Mr. President on Senate matters to the on National Assembly matters into the Senate chamber. I so move, Mr. President. The minority leader. Mr. President, <coughs> I rise to second the motion by the Senate leader that service chiefs be admitted into the chamber along with the special advisor to the president on national assembly matters in the senate i so second distinguished colleagues the senate having assessed the insecurity situation in the country particularly the infiltration of bandits kidnappers and terrorists into the fct and other parts of nigeria resolved to invite the security chiefs for briefing and for interaction today with a view to finding a lasting solution to the situation. So the Senate leader accordingly has moved that we do suspend our rules to allow strangers to approach the chambers. And this has been seconded by the minority leader. Those in support of the motion that we suspend our rules to allow strangers to approach the chambers. Can you say aye? aye. Those again say nay. The eyes have it.
Distinguished colleagues, can you settle down, please, for the business of the day? Senator Tony Woye, take your seat. Gentlemen of the press, can you leave us, please? Thank you. We've taken enough pictures. Thank you. It's okay. It's okay. Cameraman, can you take your seats? Thank you. Senator Karimi, take your seat, sir. Your Excellency, Mr. President, the Chamber is ready for business of the day, sir. Senator Ninge, take your seat, sir. Take your seat, sir.
Order, order, please, order.
Ich <lacht> Order, 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 please. Order, order. Take your seat, take your seat, distinguished colleagues, please. Take your seat, take your seat, take your seat. Senator Tony Woye, take your seat, sir. <laughs> Senator Piggy, have your seat. <laughs> Senator Karimi, take your seat, sir. Take your seat. Uh, distinguished colleagues, <laughs> let me. On behalf of the of the Senate, welcome the the Chief of Army Staff, General T. Lagbaja, to the Hello Chamber of the Senate, and also welcome Amira Ogala, the Chief of Naval Staff to the Allo Chamber of the Senate. And we also welcome Emacha Abubakar to the Allo Chamber of the Senate. And also our dear brother, uh, YM Bichi, DGSS, to the Allo Chamber of the Senate. And uh, welcome also our brother, Kayode, Ebetukun, the Inspector General of Police, who was here earlier, about two hours ago, to the Hallow Chamber of the Senate. Well, the reason for the invitation is obvious to all. Uh, we had a motion here in the Senate uh, bordering on the recent uh, upsurge of uh, insecurity in parts of the country, uh, banditry, kidnappings, and in some places, killings. And even after kidnappers have received ransom, they will still go ahead and kill the, the victims. And we also received reports that even security personnel have lost their lives in the course of struggling and fighting to bring the situation under control. Uh, we had uh, motions from our colleagues on uh, what was going on in some places in uh, Okokolo, Abuge, or Chuto Air Communities in Agutu, uh, Agatu local government of Benway State. We had reports and motions on what was going on in Taraba State. We also had uh, motions on some of the things uh, said to be going on in uh, Bodia, in uh, Oyo State. And, um, and we also had disturbing motions on Plateau State in places uh, like uh, Mango, Bokos, Barking Ladi communities in Plateau and on some other places. And then very close to us 
We also heard about the infiltration of the federal capital territory by some of the kidnappers and uh, bandits, in, uh, particularly in places like uh, Kubwa and, uh, and uh, Buari, Buari, Kubwa, and others. And we had uh, unconfirmed reports that they also have cells and they are congregating, and then the, some of the informants uh, met some of our people and even mentioned the areas where they are congregating and all that. We've also had the efforts of security chiefs and security agencies to uh, attempt to root them out. But the reports kept coming in in torrents and became very worrisome to this distinguished uh, Senate, and therefore various resolutions were arrived at, one of which was to invite the security chiefs uh, to have interaction with us to brief us on the efforts being made to cope this uh, resurgence, and uh, at the same time give us the opportunity to also make our suggestions. Uh, for the betterment of the country. So please, whilst we welcome you, we want you to know that it is not because of um, the fact that we are not passing the buck. We are not blaming any of you for anything. We believe you are doing your best. We want to hear from you and also make contributions on how we can improve the situation. And so we welcome you, but you are not complete. Uh, we've noted we receive apology from the National Security Advisor that is in a bilateral discussion with, uh, uh, with the representatives of uh, uh, security chiefs from United Kingdom uh, in a seminar or so. And so this is uh, where we are. So whilst we welcome you, we believe that the team is not yet complete. So I don't know. Uh, whether the Senate will want to proceed. Uh, but uh, my personal opinion will be that we would like to have also with you in attendance the, the Chief of Defense Staff. Uh, is it the view of the Senate? Yes. We would like also to have the National Security Advisor in attendance. Yes. Is that the view of the Senate? Yes. Would like to also have the Minister of Defense in attendance. Yes, Is that the view of the Senate? Yes, sir. Would like also to have the Minister of State Defense in attendance. Will that be the view of the Senate? Yes. We will also want the Minister of Police Affairs to be in attendance. Yes. Is that the view of the Senate? Yes. Would like to have the Minister of State Police Affairs in attendance. Yes. Is that the view of the Senate? Yes. In addition, we believe strongly that we should also have the Director General of NIA in attendance. Is that the view of the Senate? Yes. So, and we also think, in case there are financial issues involved, that we should have the Minister of Finance and Coordinating Minister of the Economy. Is that the view of the Senate? Yes. Then, so I want to, on behalf of my colleagues, thank you for your presence. And, um, and say that the clerk of the Senate uh, the, the uh, distinguished colleagues somebody has also uh, mentioned that it will also be a good idea for us to have a holistic resolution and interaction to have the Minister of Interior in, uh, in attendance. Yes. Is that the view of the Senate? Yes. So the, the clerk of the Senate, the Senate has directed accordingly that you further invite the National Security Advisor, the Minister of Defense, the Minister of State Defense, the Minister of Police Affairs, the Minister of State Police Affairs, the, uh, the Chief of Defense Staff, National Security Advisor, 
and of course the DG NIA, Minister of Interior, Minister of Finance, and Coordinating Minister of the Economy, in addition to the service chiefs who have honored in addition to the service chiefs who have honored the invitation of the Senate, uh, it's important to know that uh, we represent the Nigerian people and we can only do the will of the Nigerian people. And uh, our job is to complement the efforts of the executive and then also to assist the executive to succeed. Because if the government of President Walamed Tunibu does not succeed, it means that we have all failed. It means that Nigeria has failed. So what we are doing is definitely in the interest of the people. Uh, they, you d identified in your discussions uh, three key issues. So I'm, 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 I'm wondering whether there will be need to have the CBN governor in attendance. No. OK. So the Senate has rejected that. Uh, so the. The issues identified, principally security, is the most important issue that have been identified. And um, the Senate is also of the view that the FCT is under threat, and uh, in addition to other parts of the country. So you are welcome, but at the same time, we want to thank you for coming. And therefore, this interactive session the Deputy Senate President, if the Senate will agree with me in view of the fact that the people we have mentioned are not here, the personnel we have mentioned are not here, and we need their presence to have a holistic and complete discussion on the security situation in the country. Uh, so is it the view of the Senate that this be moved to Tuesday, the 13th day of February 2023? Those in support say aye. Those again say nay, the eyes have it. So this uh, security briefing is therefore adjourned to the 13th day of February 2024 at 11 a.m. prompt.
Order, order. Leader of the Senate. Order, order. Order, please take your seats. Senator Piggy, take your seat, sir. When you are done, announce that the chamber is ready. Okay, sir. Senator May, take your seat. Senator Ken Eze, take your seat. Your Excellency, the chamber is ready, sir. Senator Allwell, take your seat. Senator Akbayong, please take your seat. Take your seat, please. Senator Srail, please take your seat. Senator Asuko, can you take your seat, sir? Leader of the Senate. Leave leader, please. Leave leader, please. Mr. President. Order, order, order. Mr. President. Distinguished senators. Having exhausted the items on the other paper for today and going by the resolution of this hallowed chamber that nothing can be more important at this time to warrant our discussion time and attention than the issue of the state of security in the Nigerian nation. I stand to move that this chamber stand adjourned till Tuesday, the thirteenth Tuesday, the thirteenth of February, when we are going to be uh, taking on the security chiefs, as agreed and as earlier announced by Mr. President. Mr. President, I so move. Minority Leader. Mr. President, distinguished colleagues, I rise to second the motion that this Senate adjourns the 13th of February next Tuesday to enable us exhaustively and holistically attend to the service chiefs to discuss the security situation in the country. I so second. Distinguished colleagues, It was and it still is the view of the Senate that the burning issue on the agenda of these 10 Senate is the issue of the security of our nation. That we should discuss it exhaustively, meet with relevant authorities, heads of the various agencies and departments involved in security with a view to finding a lasting solution. And in view of the incomplete uh, representation today, we had earlier moved the sitting and briefings to Tuesday 13th of uh, February. I do know that there's indeed a motion is on the floor and seconded by the minority leader that this hallowed chamber should stand adjourned to that same day, 13th day of uh, February on Tuesday, to enable us commence 
with interaction, discussions, and briefs on the security situation of the country, including the FCT. Those in support of this motion have moved and second, they say aye. aye. Those again say nay. The eyes have it. So let me thank all distinguished senators and pray that today Nigeria will qualify uh, in Cote d'Ivoire by beating the Republic of uh, South Africa to qualify for the finals of AFCON to be played on Sunday. And wish many of you joining Messi's on Sunday to go and watch the finals. Uh, which will be played between Nigeria and any other country that wishes to try us. Congratulations in advance. So therefore, we are, we are hereby adjourned to Tuesday, 13th day of February 2023 at 10, 11 a.m. prompt.